Yeah. Okay, control. Do ya? What is up, everybody? This is Faust, Killhound, Plain Way of the Samurai Four. Oh yeah. So there's going to be a few tips. Well, I should say five tips. <coughs> and yeah. So, five freaking motherfucking tips to help you guys out with playing this game, which I did not find, and I will help your face out, yo. Awesome. Alrighty then. So, tip one. This guy here, this area Bring here, it. this location, Damn this it. slot, and right there where you see the arrow spinning around in circles like someone's having a freaking seizure. That is the, the smithy, no our blacksmith. Yeah. This guy is our buddy. This is one guy, and there's another guy that's like him. Well, or should I say his his student, the person he gives his software to. You want to keep these guys happy. Because they can repair your weapons and all that fun junk. The guy can go over here. And, yeah, like I could repair my weapon. So if my weapon's kind of hurt, I have 500 funds. I do that. Boom, fixed. Now my, now my weapon, if it was broken, it's repaired now. So polish is pretty much repair. Alright, so this guy will keep you happy. You can always get whetstones to repair your weapons, but once it breaks, you need to go to a smith. So you don't want to piss these guys off, attack them, hit them, look at the wrong uh, fart in their general direction or anything like that. Yeah. Or you're kind of like, damn it, you're screwed. But whetstones repair 400, and they cost a lot more than just going to the smithy. You can find some on the ground when you kill guys, and you know what? That, that's all right. All right, then. My Still other tip. More. Tip two. <clears throat> it is when you're making weapons. So the best thing to do is find a weapon that you like. Uh, the weapon design, because I can bring up a few weapons. For example, if I go over to... Uh, now let me see... Okay, my sack's empty. So, like, you find any weapons that you like. Okay, these weapons right here, or at least this one, the one in the center, that's one custom made that I like. I like the Crusader blade, how it looked. So, I pretty much found, like, pff, a crap load of those weapons, the Crusader. I would have liked to make a full Crusader uh, custom version and make a weapon that I like. But, you know what? It did not happen, but I did find some pieces that I like. Uh... As the middle piece, you can see it kind of has like a little demon head on it. So things like that. So there's three pieces to a weapon when you're building it. Is you come over here, there is a blade. There is the guard. That's how one of the guards look. And that is a handle. So those are the two handles. Okay, so you want to find weapons that you like. If you like a few weapons, just collect a shitload of them. I'm talking about like 50 plus of the weapons and break them down so you can have them in your items and then after you go over find the items you go over to your smithy as long as he's happy okay just continue on uh, and you make him happy so you have all those weapons and you can cho choose katana or spear sword or spear I like spear a lot. Spear is pretty cool. But swords are everywhere. Everybody and their grandma's next door neighbor has a sword in this game. So it's a lot easier. Most of my stuff is in toolbox, so I just go to toolbox. And look, I can find all these different uh, blades you see down there. Up on top, to the right hand side, upper right hand, you can see that it's the completed blade. So, like, whatever blade that I want to use, if I put this there, or there, it changes it to that. Or I put the chieftain on, changes it to that, changes it to that, changes it to crusader. So things like that. And, and all you need to do is find a blade that looks freaking awesome. That's like, dude, this is a freaking awesome looking blade. I like this. And then you can like, okay, guy, I will, f I'm happy with this blade, so I'm going to keep this blade around. And then, uh... The second thing is you want to make 
Well, when you have a crap load of weapons, the second thing is the charms. If you look on the left hand side at the bottom, you can see the handle, how it looks, the grip. And every time I press down, as it switches, you can see it's the same handle, but the charms at the bottom, the words at the bottom. That is the charms. They change. And you can see, they are, a lot of them are the same. And, but they have all these different charms on it. Best thing to do is get uh, multiple charms of the same thing. So you are looking for charms in the exact same place, like Big Shot. You see Big Shot on one side and the other side. So with one side, it is red, that means I am going to get the charm. If it's green on the other side, that means, hey, I have one that's similar, but I need more to make it. Alright, so you can have multiple charms on a weapon. Like, for example, is I will bring up my spear that I have. I go down to my weapons and look at this. My spear has Midas. That pretty much means more money kind of thing. And then if you go to my demon's head. Is life and death, which recovers your vitality. Really good use. Great like seriously that's one of the best charms because you never have to eat food again you just have to wait and then you recover your vitality and then light sword so during the day the sword deals more damage charms like that and then the charms are random on weapons so if you have a group of items like a, a blade a grip and a, and a guard with no charms you put them together break them apart there's a chance that they will that they'll come out with other pieces or the pieces will come out and they will have slots for charms. And you just, you have two choices, get a crap load of the weapons, or you can just keep uh, building the same weapon over and over and over again and breaking it apart. So you can get the charm that you want. But that takes a while. But, and just making a weapon like that takes a while regardless of what you do. Alright. Now another thing that I kind of wish I would have learned, but I had to watch somebody would have told me or the game would have told me is the events when you go to your journal section and your list the events so like different things like this okay one thing that kind of made it very kinda of difficult for me is for example the occupied western hospital I had no clue how to get the hooray the hospital's grand opening I had no clue how to get that but how you get it is it's through multiple storylines, multiple playthroughs. Is that I play the Western storyline multiple times, and then I end up, uh, I open up the hospital. Next time I play it is instead of opening up the hospital, I end up, oh, I go to this one, the Hooray, the hospital's grand opening. So I take care of the Occupy, and then I open up the, the hospital. And different story. And if you look here, it's the sunrise and hooray, rebuild the casino. So the sunrise is pretty much you're preventing it from people destroying it while it's being built. And hooray, it's rebuilt is that you protect it from being destroyed. And the same is like this, like destroying the casino or put an end to the construction. Something like that is one storyline you have to... Uh, destroy the casino, the next one when they're trying to rebuild it, you prevent it from being rebuilt. Things like that. Yeah, and then and if you actually look at uh if you look at the top, you can see I'm going to pick the uh, lecture is a dead man. You can see the place, the time, and what day it takes on. So you know where to go to pick up the mission and everything will go from there. All right. And while we're on the topic of multiple playthroughs, and well, just playthroughs in general, multiple playthroughs, you have to do multiple playthroughs to unlock stuff. Like this here, this is an armor that you get for doing uh, one of the night crawls with one of the characters. Oh, yeah. You have to play the game. Like the first time you play it, you just have a meld character with the default stuff, and you can always buy more stuff at the store. So that is your choice at the first playthrough but after multiple playthroughs you can start unlocking things 
like different characters you can unlock the female but depends on how you beat the game and how your character is it gives you something called samurai points which you can use to unlock stuff i'm going to come here because i believe there's nothing to be bought okay get changed okay for example like the full body i'm just going to show you i click on this and look it's a full outfit and these are different characters so different things like that but the upper lower body is yeah i had to buy that stuff from uh from this guy that i'm at apply changes now so i had to buy stuff from him so you can choose to use an already pre-made set and you can add accessories to it also because like i come here i go to the new look that's pretty much like, hey, put stuff on. And you can see on the lower left-hand side all the different items that I can place on my character. And then after you place something on your character, you can switch over to the other side and edit. And you can put it anywhere that you desire. At all. So I'm going to say right leg or right knee. So it's on the right knee. So things like that. And yeah, it's floating up, but hey, I can do the repositioning. Repositioning, yeah, the arrows just show you where it goes and different things like that. Okay, but anyways, it's with multiple playthroughs. You have to play the game multiple times so it can lock more things and different quests that you have, that you can do, and different people that you kill, which unlocks more stuff for your character to use. Ah, <sighs> goodness. So my character like for example I'm right here I'm sneaking into the administration office I do not like that one but I can skip it so I am going to skip that one because I dislike that it's annoying mission and it's kind of like a stealth mission in a game that's not meant to be stealth okay my next one my next tip is the unused weapons. Any unused weapons that you get in the game. You have a few choices. You can drop them. That means, hey, you discard the weapon. You don't use them at all. You can uh, keep it. Actually, not the best, but multiple options. Is you can discard it. You can sell it, and you can, you can keep it, or you can break it down. If you keep the weapon, it goes into your chest at the end of the game, which you can bring out anytime that you want. If you go to the dojo, go to the chest. If you sell it, you get a little bit of money for it. Not too much, but it's good to start out like when you beat all those guys at the beginning of the game. Pick up their swords and sell it to the smithy just so you can have a little bit of money. But breaking it down is one of the best options to do. Is when you break down the weapon. Is it goes into parts that is no longer taking your weapon slot at all. But because it's not taking the weapon Crazy. slot anymore, so it's that it's broken down in, into these items, these three items, the blade, the guard, the handle, the grip. Yeah. 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 When it's broken down, I believe you can have yeah. 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 Uh, items in, in that. And at the end of the game, it just goes into the chest and you can actually kill the dojo. Okay. <laughs> Alright, just find a little bit. Can't concentrate on two things at once now, that is sometimes. Okay, so like right here is the monkey tail. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna pick it up. Oh crap, I still have the bag on my character's <laughs> Okay. I'm gonna show you what, what I mean by that. Like, you can break it, you can sell it, you can drop it. You can use it. So yeah, it's your choice, but I say if you're going to keep the weapon, break it down, because you can always rebuild it. Because it's better to not take up many items in your weapon slot as possible, or your, even your weapon chest as possible. Take up least amount of room as possible, just break it down, because you'll go into th these items and you can carry infinite of it. But your weapons, you can only carry a certain amount. 
Alright. And one of the last things is like looting the dead bodies. You know those bodies there? Oh crap. <laughs> Could have killed somebody. But anyways, when you kill a person, you can choose to go over there and press X over the body, which your character will squat down and search the body where you can kick it. Kicking without having your weapon out is you just press the guard button and then press the quick attack and your character will start kicking like that. And if you kick it multiple times is like once or a few times uh, something will drop out eventually. And with most bodies is once something drops out after kicking it that's it there's no more items after that. You can keep kicking the body but the thing is that the more you end up kicking the body you get kind of a bad skill points on it. It's like unsavory things or unsamurai things that you end up doing which lower your overall score. So I would say avoid kicking a body or even just searching a body because that's kind of like considered an unsamurai thing. So if you're trying to get a playthrough to get a lot of samurai points so when you beat the game you can get more stuff don't kick bodies. Don't even search a body. Don't pick up... Well, try to not pick up too many things around bodies because you might end up searching it because it's... Just searching it one time will automatically lower your points down by... by a decent amount. I believe it was about 300 I read somewhere. About 300 points. That's kind of a lot. And then every time you do that after it lowers it by a certain number and but I do not know so those are pretty much uh, five six tips that I have given you I hope you guys like it and uh, like and subscribe and remember love the Kellhound